Hello and you're very welcome along to another episode of the ExtraTime.com World Cup special podcast. It's Donna Ryan here with you to look back on what's been a disappointing day for the Republic of Ireland women's team at the World Cup, losing 2-1 to Canada in the second game of the group. Aoife Mullen is alongside me and Aoife, like I touched on there, quite a disappointing outcome this afternoon. It is really disappointing, but I suppose in a way... It just shows you how far we've come that, you know, we're utterly devastated and disappointed having been beaten by the narrowest of margins by Australia and by Canada because we spoke last night about Canada, you know, Olympic champions, ranked six in the world. Um, and in the first half there tonight, um, this afternoon, Irish time, we looked, you know, we were toe-to-toe with them and we made them look quite average in that first half. So, yeah, it's especially disappointing. And I think just seeing the players afterwards and listening to post-match interviews, um, they were dejected. Yeah, it feels well, like I'm sitting here recording this in the rain and <laughs> the rain is just reflecting my mood. And I kind of <laughs> felt that over in Perth, the, even the weather, like the, the conditions, the Irish probably felt very much at home. <laughs> and it was ole, ole, ole. That's all I could hear ringing around for the first half an hour at least. So um, it was probably home from home from them over there in, in Perth. But uh, certainly, I suppose, the bleakness outside reflects the mood. Yeah, it certainly seemed like there was a lot more Irish fans at the game this afternoon um, than Canadian fans. Or maybe it was just uh, the Irish making themselves heard, as they always do. I'm not too sure. But it certainly felt like there was a lot more support there for... um, That was something that we pointed out in the first game as well. You know, Mm. it was a large stadium and we anticipated there'd be quite a few... Irish fans there you know like a large contingent and I think Perth obviously quite a lot of people with Irish connections living there a smaller more intimate venue so they really did as you say make their voices heard this time and the players acknowledged that too I think Kate McCabe's post-match interview she she did say how grateful they were to the supporting the fans who traveled and maybe the fans who live there but certainly the Irish fans who offered the support during that game yeah, for sure. And um, but I suppose just touching on Katie McCabe, I mean Ireland couldn't have got off to a better start, really. Yeah, it was a dream start. And I was just thinking back to that Ireland Denmark game, the men's game with that early goal. I'm thinking when I stood there in the Aviva thinking this is a bit early, <laughs> nearly too early. But um no, it was a dream start and I suppose fitting that it was Katie McCabe who scored that goal. Um and I suppose we were just ecstatic at that point and we stayed on top for, you know, for that first half, as I said, we just looked so comfortable and it was carrying on really the momentum from the last 20, 30 minutes of the Australia game. And when yourself and myself spoke last night, that's exactly what we asked for. You know, we hoped that we would be able to carry that forward, start as we left um, in, in Sydney and it looked like that. And they were really, I suppose, geared up for this one. And I think the last game in Sydney, a lot of people spoke about the passion with which Aaron Levine um, was sung. And certainly you could see that again today, that really from from the get-go, they were really up for it. Perhaps as well, the comments yesterday, I suppose, if, if we think of you know pinning these comments on the dressing room wall and stuff like that, when they, the Canadian coach spoke about Ireland being a horrible team to play against and speaking about how Ireland play with passion, whereas they had, they have quality. Like in the first half, it, it certainly looked like, you know, we had just as much quality. So certainly, as you said, it was a dream start and it looked like we were dominating. And if only we could have carried that through to the second half. Um, it's all the ifs and buts. But as you say, like what a moment of class. And it's just, it's a start, like it's a stark moment. And the first goal in a Women's World Cup for Ireland, as I said, isn't it just fitting that it did come from Captain Fantastic. Do you think she meant it? Yeah, I think she meant it, just like Steve Staunton. It's completely <laughs> Stan-esque, and I have to bring that up, being a Dundalk person. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, one thing you highlighted there, Aoife, was passion. And like, you know, I, I was going to mention Aaron Levine as well, just before you did. I don't think I've ever seen someone happier to sing Aaron Levine than Anya O'Gorman. I mean, drafting in at the very last minute, I thought she did a pretty good job, given how late 
her inclusion was to the starting lineup. But like all of the Irish players were absolutely belting out Iron Levine. I think it, that's a that's a great thing to see, and it really underlines the passion that was highlighted already. And although Canada did ultimately have better the better quality, Ireland do play with passion as what was highlighted by the Canadian manager. But you know, it, it that carries you a long way. Ultimately, not far enough, but it does bring you quite far. Yeah, it definitely does. And I think like it was something that was mentioned from the first game. I don't think we actually mentioned it in the podcast because we, we had so much to talk about. But but certainly like it sets the tone. And as you say, you you know, you can see that passion and that's that as you say carries through into the performance and I suppose really has the, there's the kind of a team bonding element or you know, that group ethic that we're all in this together. But it's spine tingling for us at home watching it. So the, the feeling there and the atmosphere there and, you know, that feeling that's palpable, it must be so powerful on the pitch. And again, they, they certainly use that to their advantage. But every single one of them, as you said, it was just remarkable um, because, you know, you don't always see that. Um, but even mentioning there, as you, as you mentioned, John, Anya Gorman, she, she was fantastic in the first half and as you say called up late and I know on last night's podcast we were speaking about Abby Larkin and we mentioned how Anya with her experience was encouraging Abby and telling her to play and in the pre-match interviews when she was asked about you know whether she would feature and her hopes for, for the rest of the tournament Anya said you know I'm always ready and like they were her words and boy was she ready today and she stepped up and um, we I was going to say we were shocked, although we, we did mention that Heather Payne had that strapping yesterday. So there was a question mark over her, although it was Louise Quinn, I suppose everyone was focused on in the in the build up to the game. But, you know, when there was that late change, as you say, Anya was just there, ready to to slot in so naturally and um, ready to, to step up and showed all of her experience and all of her professionalism in doing that. Yeah, and the first League of Ireland player, I think, to play at a World Cup as well for Ireland, which is a fantastic achievement in itself. Isn't that just remarkable. I thought it was lovely how she was speaking about, um, you know, that her her son's at home, and I think she said her his first birthday is coming up one of these days, and he couldn't be there. But she was trying to make sure that she was recording snippets and moments on, um, on video. So that was yesterday before she became, um, that the first League of Ireland player to start. So it certainly will be special stories to tell to James when he gets older. Absolutely, It'd be lovely memories to have. Even though results not going Ireland's way, still the, the the trip of a lifetime, really for all these players. Yeah, exactly. And I think back to what you said in the in the very first of these World Cup podcasts about, um, I suppose this this success filtering through, or this kind of setting the tone for you know for future generations. I think that's something that we have to remember as well you know how far the team has come and how far the women of, of Ireland have come you know in, in terms of soccer because it's you know it's only six years ago that they were fighting for equality and the recognition that they deserved so to see them on the World Cup stage is is truly remarkable but also as you say that it's going to kind of have that domino effect and the children all across the country have heroes now to look up to and not just young girls but you know young boys it's you know Katie McCabe Denise Sullivan I shouldn't just name those two but you know we've household names now who um are heroes and that's the way it should be and as you say like I think after the game it was Katie McCabe at the press conference who said that this was the first World Cup that Ireland qualified for but it certainly won't be the last and I think this is a huge step in getting that experience, like we saw how much experience counts for when Canada brought on those three subs um, at half time, And, you know, I think combined all of their subs had 634 international caps. So experience means a lot and the team can only learn from it. I know that's kind of hard to say immediately after a game. Um, that's not what people want to hear and to make the defeat any easier. But it's the first World Cup and what those girls are going to get from that is is immense. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose we better kind of touch on the game itself. We've already alluded to Katie McCabe's super goal there at the very beginning. But although Ireland did push Canada to the pin of their collar there in the first half, 
it was a lucky break for Canada to equalize on the stroke at halftime. And then Aoife, they really just kind of pulled away in the second half. They really did because you could see that they they were shocked, like they were rattled. And that early goal, that you know, their, their huddle afterwards when they kind of came together, they, they really just didn't have any answers to the questions that Ireland were asking. So, the, you know, Ireland were playing so, so well and with such confidence. And I think that like the press was really good from Ireland in, in that first half. And they were forcing Canada out wide and into places that Canada didn't want to go. So, you know, they were asking those questions. Um, and as you say, that lucky break, like um, when Grosso was was out and um, she made that run, but you know Fahi was with her and you know me Fahi was trying to do all the right things, but it was just I suppose that unfortunate lapse in concentration or you know moment of confusion, maybe lack of communication where Louise Quinn maybe would have cleared that ball better, but you know it. I suppose you're you're coming. It, it was five minutes really after the um, the forty five minutes, so you're coming towards the end of the half and. Ireland were I suppose kind of under a bit of pressure and maybe just willing that halftime whistle to go because and I know that like it's the cliche that it's not a good time to score but certainly that really I suppose was hammered home today because had Ireland gone in there one goal ahead we know what that would have done to Canada's confidence because even watching them you know on screen as I said they were shocked and they were rattled and they weren't expecting um, the onslaught that that Ireland had, had brought. So it was just so unfortunate for, for Megan and you do feel such sympathy for her. Um, but it just meant that, you know, all of the wonderful work and all of the quality from the first half then, I suppose, had been had been erased really because we were starting on a level playing, playing field again for the second half. And on the goal that eventually won it from Leon for Canada, it was a great ball, a great through ball in from the left hand side to pick her out. But she still had a bit of work to do to shake off the defender. A good finish as well, but it, like it was like the ball was put on a plate for her, really. It really was. And like those halftime substitutions, substitutions that Canada made really, really, you know, they, they, they showed their class and it changed the game. It gave them more confidence and played with more freedom, I suppose. Like they would have wanted Jess Fleming on the ball, and like when Sinclair came on, she was she was excellent at holding the ball up. Like that's what she she does best, and kind of did, didn't have that in the first half, so she did kind of help Schmidt there. And as you say, the finish in the end was was quality, and there was nothing Courtney Brosnan could do about that. But it was just unfortunate from an Irish point of view. You know, the, usually we we defend so well, and it was just unfortunate that as you say, she had that chance and she had that space. Yeah, and of course, Australia taking on Nigeria tomorrow, the other game in the group. That's getting underway at 11 a.m. Irish time tomorrow. Not too sure what the time different, what, what time it'll be over in Australia for that game. But, um, you know, you'd imagine Australia will take the three points there. That'll see them through and probably top in the group. Um, unfortunately, the results today mean that Ireland can't progress any further. Yeah, that's kind of the sucker punch, isn't it? It's just. It's disappointing and I suppose there was that feeling after the Australia game that that was probably a game that we would have targeted to get a point because we kind of knew like that whole the term of you know the group of death and that's what it was coined but we would have been looking at the fixtures on paper and thinking right Canada Olympic champions ranked sixth if we could get a draw against Australia and you know maybe go on to win against Nigeria but which we still may do and it would be nice to go out on a high and get a positive result um, against Nigeria but yeah it's hard to see anything else but Australia getting past Nigeria with a win and as you say topping the group and uh, and going through um, and I suppose that's what their fans would be expecting and wanting as hosts but but certainly there's so much to be positive about from the Irish point of view and, and that performance today, I, th- I think at half time we felt hard done by. Like it, we we felt that we didn't deserve to be um, level, that we should have been ahead. Although Canada did miss a sitter in that first half, but I think the performance in the first half was probably deserving of that one goal lead. And it, you just felt like, as you say, that moment was probably the key moment that changed the game. Um, and it was just an, an unfortunate error again. It's a bit of a, a deja vu feeling, but it was just. It was it was hard to to stomach that one, and especially the, the effect that that had and the, the momentum shift, I suppose. But you know, just to to highlight 
the excellent performance that they were. Like you mentioned, Katie McCabe, we mentioned Anya Gorman already. But Kira Caruso, I thought, had an excellent first half as well, an excellent game. And I was actually a bit surprised that, that she that change was made then in the second half because I thought she was doing so well. And it's it's a tough job, you know, leading the line, but she certainly put Buchanan under pressure and I thought she was she was fantastic. And again, Abby Larkin um coming on at half time. I don't know. I suppose it's easy now, isn't it? Looking back and hindsight's a great thing. But I thought Lucy Quinn had played really well in the first half as well. And I thought that we were getting a lot of joy in that right side. And perhaps maybe did that substitution come a little bit early? Like as we, we said yesterday, that Abby was probably going to be an ideal impact sub. And maybe had we continued on in the same vein for a little while of the second half and had time to settle into things a bit to bring Abby on at that point. But, you know, we... As I said, it's easy to say that now. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one, Aoife, to be honest. Um, like, yeah, of course, as you say, it's easy to say it now. In hindsight, is twenty twenty and all that. But I think Abby Larkin maybe was sprung a little bit too early. I think looking at the game, I'd say if I was Vera Powell, I would have thought, OK, Canada are on the ropes here. So we'll, we'll hit them with the impacts up now and see if we can make it pay kind of early in the second half and get 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 a foothold back in the game. Unfortunately, it, it went the opposite way. But as, as you said, Lucy Quinn, I thought, was doing really well in the uh, in the first half. She was getting a lot of the diagonal of the ball into the box, and that was causing a lot of trouble for the Canadian defence, especially in the early stages of the first half. So, yeah, I reckon like some of the substitutions, you probably question them, all right, like no more than Caruso as well. I mean, Amber Barrett was fairly ineffective, it has to be said, when she came on, but, of course, she was feeding off scraps as well. So a difficult job for her once she came onto the field of play as well. Yeah. I suppose it was difficult for all three substitutes. Like I, I was quite surprised at a triple substitution at the time that it came at. And I suppose maybe they were feeling that sense of urgency as well and a bit of panic. It, it just looked like we lost a little bit of the composure that we had in the first half. And I suppose we were chasing the game and, and the players obviously kind of felt that. But um, but certainly just to kind of say that I thought Caruso was excellent and, and and Sinead Farley again, I suppose, as, as the clock ticked towards the hour mark, we kind of thought it will be Sinead that, that will come off. And I know that O'Gorman came off first, but um, but Sinead, for the for the time that she spent on the pitch, was was excellent. And, and certainly another one to to mark as, as a good performer. And, you know, there were such great performances all across the pitch that it's just, as we said at the outset, it's just disappointing <laughs> looking back. Yeah, quite disappointing, I suppose, is the only way to sum it up, really. And finally, Aoife, just looking ahead to the final group game, I suppose we'll, we'll probably come back and speak about it a little bit closer to the time again, sort of something for all the listeners to keep an, keep an ear out for in the coming days as well. But looking ahead to the Nigeria game, I mean, could it be a case now that the like, okay, the tournament is effectively over for both teams, barring a miracle for Nigeria tomorrow, let's be honest, um, it could be a case of for Ireland that the shackles will be off and they'll just see Nigeria as a free hit, really. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how they play then because, you know, they seem to have played like a little bit more, I don't know, freedom maybe. And um, I thought like a lot of confidence there in the first half today, you know, in the opening phases of the game. So, it would be interesting to see how Ireland perform, as you say, with with the shackles off. And certainly, you know, the, this is their opportunity to to go out and to ex- express themselves and and give it a, a good shot because they've sh- they've shown, like as I've said, on paper, we're you know we're behind Australia and Canada, who are ranked in the in the top ten. So it was always going to be difficult, and it was always going to be a challenge. And you know, we'd spoken prior to the games about how we would be setting up defensively and trying to frustrate the opposition. So, as you say, there's less pressure now on the shoulders and we, we can look forward to seeing performances from the Irish team against Nigeria and something, as you say, to, to continue to look forward to, even though the hopes of progressing further, unfortunately, um, are not there anymore. Unfortunately not. And as Ireland's World Cup campaign basically comes to an end still, Another game to go in the group and hopefully they'll be able to secure three points at a World Cup for the very first time in appearing at the competition. Ethan Mullen, thanks for joining us again this week. Thanks a million, Dodo.